channel or welcome back to my channel my name is Andy sometimes mouse and I talk about books and book related things and today I am giving you my October TBR now full disclaimer this TBR is largely series continuations and a bit of horror mixed in just because October is one of my favorite months uh, this is a small TBR for me only because four of the 18 books I have planned <laughs> are uh, graphic novels, so they are short and sweet. The reason that I have decided to do less than 20, which is what I've kind of been doing for the last few months, is because October is the month that my husband comes home. So he will be home, I believe, the week that this video goes up. Uh, maybe? If my if my if I'm thinking about my my posting calendar, it's it's either this week or um, next week. Uh, it might be next week, actually, um, but that would be why I am trying to keep this TBR a bit low because um, I'm going to do most of my heavy duty reading in the first half of the month and then when he's home I'm going to lower that reading because I know that I'm going to be busy, right? So it's been two years. I'm going to be preoccupied spending time with my husband. I'm not going to try to read the whole time. Uh, hello? I guess we're gonna have another thumbnail with Tybalt in it. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about those series continuations. Uh, as always with the series continuations, I am gonna give a small disclaimer that I try not to go too in depth about the like what's happening in those because I don't want to um, spoil anything, and that's a bit difficult with how far into a lot of these books that I am. Uh, so, like, for the encrypted series, I'm on book 10, you know? So, but I'm gonna give a, like, slight summary. I've tried to, like, mildly summarize for you guys, um, instead of just bypassing like I normally do. Uh, so, first up, we have Calculated Risks by Shauna McGuire. This is the 10th book in the encrypted series. I am almost done with the encrypted series, which is fun. Uh, or at least done with the books that are currently out. Uh, this particular book is about the Price's cousin named Sarah. She is a cuckoo, and she has been recovering from something that I can't get into or it would spoil things that happened way early on. Um, but now she basically has to save her family, so we'll see how that goes. Next, we have The Dark Talent by Brandon Sanderson. This is a part of the Alcatraz vs. the Evil Librarian series. I think it is book five? Um, Alcatraz Medjury is back and announces that this is the last book of his autobiography, which is super weird because there's like two more books in the series, so... Okay. He has to enter the heart of the librarian power uh, to try and bring his bestie and not girlfriend and maybe girlfriend, who knows, uh, Vastil out of her coma and also like to try to stop his dad from like bringing in just unleashing chaos because he sucks. I can't stand this guy's dad. He sucks. Boo. Father Smendry guy. You suck. Next up, we have Among the Betrayed by Margaret Peterson Haddix. This is a book series I'm reading because of Ozzy's husband. He has been on the vlog before. You guys have seen David before. Uh, in a society that allows no more than two children per family under penalty of death, their children are forced into hiding or to live in Fall, uh, live with false identity papers. In Among the Imposters, which is a book prior to this one, uh, Nina e Ida Edie was arrested for treason for supposedly trying to trick the population police into arresting other students she said were illegal third children. Now she faces torture or death unless she agrees to betray the three other imprisoned third children. Her dilemma intensifies when she meets the prisoners who are only 10, 9, and 6. That one's gonna be dark. Uh, Witch Volume 6 by Elizabeth Nome is the final book in the Nerissa's Revenge volumes. Um, I cannot tell you what this one is about because it will absolutely spoil the previous book. So just don't, don't even worry about it. And then we have Witch uh, Volume 7. The girls seem to face new challenges everywhere they turn, and the pressure is threatening to tear them apart. Even their normal lives aren't free of stress, particularly when Will's long-absent father returns. Fuck that guy, probably. I don't know. The next two graphic novels we have are Whisper Me a Love Song uh, by Iku Takashima, uh, volume 5 and 6. I... yes. Hello? Uh, this follows two girls as they navigate being girlfriends. It's very cute. 
very just it's sweet it's just very sweet I don't really need to get too into it um, but I enjoy them a lot okay that's all you need to know I don't know if you can hear him but he's just like walking around yelling about stuff he just went and laid down with mister so hopefully he um, he stops next up yes we are still going through series that I will be reading this specifically is going to be like I don't really need to reread this first book because it's it's a thriller series and thriller series like this don't generally need you to read all of them like they can just be picked up at random um, but I will be rereading The Sorority Murder by Alison Brenna Brennan um, in this story there's this guy named Lucas who's like very concerned about this girlie's death Candace Swain uh, she left a sorority party one night and never came back her body was found but the case grew cold so he made a podcast asking for tips and on that podcast he had uh, Reagan Merritt Reagan Merritt is a formal U former U.S. Marshal um, a new tip comes into the podcast and the person who gave a tip died Dun, dun, dun. So, like, what happened to Candace? Is something going to happen to Luca? Who lives? Who dies? Who knows? The next book is Don't Open the Door, which is, again, following Regan Merritt. Um, her son was senselessly murdered, and he was 10, and it led to her inevitable divorce. She gets a voicemail from her former boss, Tommy, um, saying that he had news about the killing, and so she, like, goes to find out about it, and it turns out that Tommy's dead, too. So now she needs to figure out, like, she like brings it up to her husband he's like being super super suspicious about it and so now she needs to like hey besties did you kill our son because i'll kill you no basically she needs to figure out who done it it's a who done it you know then we have the my heart is a chainsaw trilogy by stephen graham jones i hope this trilogy because i like these books but i do not want to read more of them <laughs> i really put off the last one because i, I don't really want to read it but i'm going to because i need to finish this series and i'm like determined to finish my series these books follow jay daniels specifically um in the very first book uh there is this like this lake where this event happened like where 80 slasher film-esque thing happened jay daniels super hyper fixates on those slashers um 50 years ago there was a massacre and now everything is like setting up for a slasher so like who done it who did it is she ready to be a final girl has she like prepared herself well enough to do that um it's a good horror book don't get me wrong i enjoyed them i just don't understand why there's three of them <laughs> that's kind of the gist is that i i don't understand why there's three of them um but i will be reading my heart is a chainsaw don't fear the reaper and the angel of indian lake um i genuinely don't remember how the last one ended so i i do need to reread it in order to proceed i'm never gonna finish filming this video because the pets are being insane on to the other books that i will be reading this month Starting with 4,000 Weeks, uh, Time Management for Mortals, I think is the secondary title of it, by Oliver Berkman. Um, this pulls from ancient and contemporary philosophers, psychologists, and spiritual teachers um, attempting to deliver an entertaining, humorous, practical, and ultimately profound guide to time and time management, rejecting the futile modern obsession with getting everything done. This book introduces readers to tools for constructing a meaningful life by embracing finitude, showing that many of the unhelpful ways we've come to think about time aren't in a capable unchanging truths but choices that we've made as individuals and as a society and what that we could do things differently i love a little self-help book about time management do i think it will help any no but that habit book did teach me a few things so i think atomic habits that's what it's called i think this could be this could be interesting next up we have castle in the attic by elizabeth winthrop this is an old book this is a real old book i think there was a tv show cannot confirm but i'm pretty sure i read this as a kid Cannot confirm that either. William has just received the best present of his life, an old, real-looking stone and wooden model of a castle with a drawbridge, bridge, a moat, and a finger-high knight to guard the gates. It's the mysterious castle his housekeeper has told him about, and even though William is sad she's leaving, now the castle's his. <laughs> Bye! Thanks for the castle! This is just so rude. William can't wait to play with the castle. He's certain there's something magical about it. And, sure enough, when he picks up the tiny silver knight, it comes alive in his hand. 
Sir Simon tells William a mighty story of wild sorcery, wizards, and magic. Suddenly, William is off on a fantastic quest to another land and another time where a fiery dragon and an evil will the, uh, evil will wizard are waiting to do battle. I don't know why I was struggling with that word. Anyway, it's old. It seems fun. Next up, we have Abolition Democracy by Angela Davis, Angela Y. Davis. This is another set of interviews and conversations about abolition and democracy uh, and how it's uh, compromised of like racist origins and institutions and um, there are more recent disclosures and stuff, although this is an older book, so not that recent comparatively, but uh, it's one of those. I do struggle with some of the abolitionist books because so many of them just regurgitate the same information. However, I like Angela Y. Davis's writing a lot, so I think it'll be really interesting to read. So yeah, and I'm also in a place again where I can start consuming that content and it feel less harmful to me. Um, when you're going through having a loved one be incarcerated, abolitionist content feels harmful because knowing how bad it is when you are living it doesn't uh, help. It doesn't help any. So <laughs> next up we have Bad Graces by Kiri McCauley. I've read a book by this author before. I really enjoyed that book. Um, I think it was The Dead Lie Down or something. All the Dead Lie Down. Um, Liv Whitlock knows she doesn't belong there, but after years of stumbling between foster homes, often due to her own self-destructive tendencies, Liv desperately needs to change the tra trajectory of her life. So she steals her perfect sister's identity, because of course you do. Liv starts to rewrite her story, winning a prestigious internship on a movie set filming in Alaska, and finds herself on a luxury yacht alongside pop star Paris Grace, actress sisters Effie and Mary Knight. Oh, those are pop star Paris Grace, comma, actress sisters Effie and Mary Knight, comma, Olympic gymnast Rosalind Doris, and social media influencer Celia Jones. Liv tries to find common ground with her famous companions, but just as the group starts to bond, a violent storm wrecks their vessel, stranding them on an island in the North Pacific Ocean. BT dubs, this book got compared to Yellow Jackets. Thank you! That's why I picked it up. Among the threats of starvation and uh, exposure, they learn there is a predator lurking in the forest, unlike anything they've ever seen before, until they begin to see it in themselves. Every injury they suffer on the island causes inexplicable, inexplicable changes in their bodies. With little hope for rescue and only each other as their final tether to humanity, can the girls endure the ominous forces at work on the island, or will they lose themselves to darker forces? This isn't even the horror book I'm most excited about this month. I'm about to talk about that one, but this one is very high up there and I am excited about it. Next up, we have The Eyes Are the Best Part. <laughs> I keep seeing this cover, especially whenever I go to the horror bookstore near me, and it just looks disgusting and I can't, I can't wait to read it. I hope, I'm trying not to have high hopes because I, whenever I have high hopes, I tend to be disappointed, but um, here we are. Jiwon's life tumbles into disarray in the wake of her appa's extramarital affair and subsequent departure. Her mother, distraught. Her younger sister, hurt and confused. Her college freshman grades, failing. Her dreams, horrifying, yet enticing. In them, Jiwon walks through bloody rooms full of eyes. Succulent blue eyes. Salivatingly blue eyes. Eyes the same shape and shades as George's, who's Uma's obnoxious new boyfriend. George has already overstayed his welcome in her family's claustrophobic apartment. He brags about his puffed-up consulting job, ogles Asian waitresses while dining out, and acts condescending towards Jiwon and her sister as he, if he deserves all of Uma's fawning adoration, adoration. No, George doesn't deserve anything from her family. Jiwon will make sure of that. For no matter how many victims accumulate around her campus, or how many people she must deceive and manipulate, Jiwon's hunger and her rage deserve to be sated. Yes, bitch, they do. Also, ew, are you eating eyes? I need to know. And next, this is a book that was on my release radar and um, transparently. If I do not like this book, I will be giving up this author's writing. This is going to be the last one for me. I have only enjoyed one book from this author. Any previous books I've tried to read from this author I did not super enjoy. So if this one falls into that category, I think it's going to be time for me to let this go. Uh, but that is going to be Lady Macbeth by did I, I, Ava Reed. It removed, it put the, the wrong last name. Anyway, by Ava Reed. This is a Lady Macbeth retelling. That's really what you need to know, is that it's a horror Lady Macbeth retelling. Um, if you don't know, uh, Lady Macbeth had to marry this Scottish brute uh, who won't leave his warrior ways behind when he comes to the marriage bed, um, but she has her own secrets, like she's got prophecies and magic and all of these things, and we're gonna find out what happens. So I think it's gonna be 
really interesting. But that's it. That's the TBR for October. I'm very excited about the things that I have planned. Um, if you are reading any of these books, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you have read them and liked them, tell me what you liked about them, because by the time this video goes up, I may have read a couple of them. If you have not read them and want to know my thoughts about them, let me know. I might have an answer for you by the time I reply to comments. If you didn't enjoy this video, I'm sorry. I'll try to do better next time, I guess. I don't know why you have to be mean to me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and I hope that you guys are preparing for Clear Your Shit because that's happening next month, so don't forget about that. The announcement video for that is coming up uh, sometime later this month, I think towards the end of the month. Um, yeah, I think that's that's everything. Uh, I post videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, except for the first full week of the month because taking breaks is important. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share, and uh, don't forget to take your meds, drink your water, and do something today to take care of yourselves. To take care of yourselves. I don't know why I'm stumbling over my words today. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, thanks, bye.